Hello guys, I am Manoranjan Burman and welcome to my YouTube channel Medical Lab Tech. So today we are, we are going to discuss about the absolute eosinophil count. So before going to start the topic, I would like to give an introduction of eosinophil. So eosinophil is a type of blood cell which are categorized under WBC. That is the white blood cells or you can say leukocytes. So if we'll start with the clinical significance. So absolute eosinophil count is done mainly by the manual method. We can use manual method also and automated method also. If we are going to use the manual method, then we need to use hemocytometer. This is the picture of a hemocytometer or you can say Newbert chamber. So there are some conditions where the eosinophils will increase and eosinophils will decrease. So increased eosinophil is known as eosinophilia. So eosinophilia we can see in some conditions like allergy, some kind of drug reactions, in autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is a disease where our body will not be able to distinguish between self and non-self. So as a result, they will they will destroy healthy cells. So parasitic infections, infections caused by the parasites, fungal infections, infections caused by the fungus, and in certain leukemias. Leukemias means blood cancer. So this is the increase uh, eosinophil conditions. So now going to talk about the decrease eosinophil conditions. That is known as isno. So, isnophenia is seen in hyperadrenalism and cursing syndrome. So, you may be thinking about what is hyperadrenalism. Hyperadrenalism is a condition where high levels of adrenal hormones are there in the blood. And if you talk about cursing syndrome, cursing syndrome occurs when the body is exposed to high levels of cortisol hormone for a longer duration. So it causes Cushing syndrome. So if we talk about the normal reference range of eosinophils, then it is 40 to 400 cells per cubic millimeter of blood. So if the eosinophil count is below 40, it is known as eosinopenia, which is seen in hyperadrenalism and Cushing syndrome. And if it is more than 440 cells per cubic mm, then it is known as eosinophilia, which is seen in allergic conditions, autoimmune disease, and so and so. So next, uh, going to talk about the principle of the test. So we have to dilute the blood with eosinophil diluting fluid. That is the Hingelman solution. Eosinophil diluting solution is known as Hingelman's solution also. So we need to dilute. So after diluting, except the eosinophil, other cells like the RBCs and other leukocytes and whatever cells, it will be lysed. It will be lysed and only the eosinophils will remain intact. So, after that, the eosinophils will take red color. So, because of because the eosinophil diluting fluid contains eosin stains, so as a result, eosinophils will take up red color. And these red color cells, uh, we will count under the low power obje objective in a microscope using the Newber counting chamber. And the requirement, what are the requirements we need to need for performing absolute eosinophil count? That is uh, the K3 EDTA whole blood. Then light microscope, you need Newbert chamber, you need a diluting fluid, Hengelman solution. So how you can prepare Hengelman solution or the composition of the Hengelman solution is yellow eosin 0.5 gram, 95% phenol, 0.5 ml, formalin, 5 ml, distilled water, 99 ml. And you need micropipettes and 
glass tube and normal pipe itself also so now coming to the procedure so first of all you need to pipe it 0.36 ml of eosinophil diluting fluid in a test tube and at 0.04 ml of k3 dta blood and mix mix it but do not mix more than 40 seconds and the keep the mixture for 10 minutes you have to after mixing you have to wait for 10 minutes so after 10 minutes you need to charge the new birth chamber and after charging the new birth chamber you need to keep in a moist chamber why we are using a moist moist chamber for 2 to 3 minutes the purpose of using moist chamber is to prevent evaporation of the fluid so after 2 to 3 minutes count the cells under low power objective with reduced light that means you need to uh, close the diaphragm in all in all the nine square of the new birth chamber so i'll show you i'll show you the picture of the new birth chamber you need to count with all the nine square see here this is the new birth chamber once you will see the new birth chamber under the microscope you can see this this portion so this all nine square means this is one square this is number 2 square number 3 square number 4 square number 5 square number 6 number 7 number 8 number 9 that means you need to count this whole area so once you will count the whole area you need to keep the record of the cell and you need to use the formula to count the actual number uh, in cube uh, cells per cubic mm so how will use the formula this is the formula so number of cells into dilution divided by area counted into depth so number of cells counted the the cells which you have counted under the new birth chamber under the microscope into dilution dilution means in this case dilution is 10 and area counted area counted the area you have counted i'll show you area counted the whole this 9 square area is 9 mm square so you will use 9 mm into depth depth means the depth of the new birth chamber which is 0.1 mm how you uh, you may be confused about the depth so depth is a space between the cover slip and the new birth chamber that distance is 0.1 mm that is known as the depth so if you will calculate like this uh, 9 into 1 0.9 here number of cells into 10 divided by 0.9 so and the number of cells will be you are counting under the microscope that that number which you have got you have, you have to place that number here and do the calculation accordingly and the result which you get it will be expressed in the the cell per cubic mm thank you for watching and see you in an another video